A young French countrywoman named Bernadette had one of the most extraordinary experiences in Catholic and generally Western history, beginning on the 11th of February in the year 1858. This experience would lead to a literal fountain of grace opening for the whole world. While not like the other Marian apparitions that I've covered in past videos on this channel, in that Our Lady did not come bearing dire warnings of corruption, chastisement, and dangers to the faithful, the apparition of Our Lady of Lords does fit neatly into the chain of warnings the faithful have received by various Marian apparitions from Our Lady of Buen Successo through Our Lady of Fatima, Our Lady of Akita, and Our Lady of Revelation. See if you can see how the messages fit together. Our story begins when Bernadette's mother permitted her to go with her younger sister Maria and some friends out to the nearby fields to gather dry wood. Their usual spot for this was a field in front of the grotto. Due to her poor health, Bernadette stayed behind. The girls crossed the stream, but Bernadette did not dare to enter the water because it was too cold. She was in generally poor health. The girls insisted that she try, and when she started to take off her shoes, a very loud noise, like the noise of a strong wind, made her raise her head and looked around. She asked herself, what is this? The leaves from the trees did not move. The loud noise of the wind started again and was strongest around the grotto. At the rear of the grotto, a spectacular apparition stood in front of her. At the same exact moment, the nearby church bell started to ring to announce the Angelus. The First Apparition Bernadette saw a bright, pure light that was easy to behold. In that light was a lady. She was dressed in a brilliant white dress of unknown texture, and tied to it was a blue ribbon. A long white veil that fell to her feet covered her body. She stood barefoot on a wild rose bush. Two gold-colored brilliant roses covered the top of the Blessed Virgin Mary's feet. Her hands were clasped together in front of her chest in a fervent, prayerful position. She held a long white and gold rosary with a beautiful golden cross between her fingers. Her presence radiated happiness, majesty, innocence, holy goodness, and peace. Her forehead was smooth and serene. Her eyes blue and full of love. Our Lady seemed to be greeting Bernadette tenderly while she bent toward her. Bernadette took her rosary from her own pocket. She always carried one with her. She made the sign of the cross as if to protect herself, and her hand became paralyzed. At that moment, the Blessed Virgin took the cross of the rosary, made the sign of the cross, and asked Bernadette to do the same. She regained the use of her arm. Our Lady started to go through the beads of the rosary between her fingers, and Bernadette started to pray her rosary with her. After she finished, Our Lady made a sign with her finger so that Bernadette may come closer. With her hand extended, she leaned gently with a smile, as if she was departing from her. That ended the first apparition of the Lords. Bernadette asked the other girls if they saw the Lady, and they responded that they had not. She told them her experience and asked them to remain silent about it, but Bernadette's sister told their mother. Her mother did not believe her account of the apparition and ordered Bernadette to stop daydreaming and even prohibited her from going to the grotto again. That same evening, while praying the family rosary, Bernadette broke out in tears, repeating her favorite invocation, O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Second Apparition On February 14th, the girls pressured their parents for permission to return to the grotto. The townsfolk thought that what happened to Bernadette was from the devil and she was told to return to the grotto and pour holy water on the ground at the site of the apparition, with their th the going theory being that if it was the devil who had appeared, he would flee. When arriving at the grotto, Bernadette asked the people to kneel and pray the holy rosary. Uh, the Blessed Mother then appeared again. Bernadette's face was transfigured. She sprinkled holy water and said, If you come from God, come near us. The holy water touched the feet of the smiling Blessed Mother as she came closer to Bernadette. She took the Holy Rosary and made the sign of the cross. Together, they prayed. By afternoon, the, ap the attitude of the townspeople had changed dramatically. The talk of the town was that wonderful things were occurring at the grotto. Of course, not everyone was convinced, and some uh, mocked the growing number of believers. The Third Apparition Bernadette's parents changed their minds, becoming convinced because of her story because Bernadette had no history of lying and was generally an obedient child. Their change of attitude was aided by the ease by which Bernadette could recount the events and minute details without stress or reservation. 
On February the 18th, a local noblewoman and a religious sister accompanied Bernadette to the grotto. First, they went to Mass at 5.30 a.m., and from there to the grotto. Bernadette walked almost unnaturally fast. Upon her arrival, she kneeled and started to pray the rosary. Bernadette let out a scream of joy when Our Lady appeared at the far side of the grotto. She asked her if she may stay with her two companions, and the Blessed Mother agreed. They also kneeled, started to pray the rosary, and lit the blessed candle they had brought with them. Bernadette tried to hand a piece of paper to the Blessed Mother and asked her to write her message down. The Virgin said, What I have to communicate is not necessary to write down. Just grant me the gift of coming here during 15 consecutive days. Bernadette promised Our Lady to do so, to which Our Lady responded, I also promise to make you happy, not in this world, but in the next. The 15 Miraculous Days Rumors of the apparitions spread quickly and multitudes visited the grotto. On the 19th of February, Bernadette arrived at the grotto, accompanied by her parents and a, a growing crowd. From this day on, she went to all the apparitions bearing a lit candle. The next day, the 20th of February, it is estimated that 500 people went with Bernadette. The 21st of February, thousands of people filled the grotto. At one point, it seemed as if the apparition of Our Lady was leaving the area. So as not to lose the, uh, the Virgin from her sight, Bernadette approached on her knees. She could see that Mary appeared sad. She asked her, what is wrong? What can I do? The Blessed Mother responded, pray for sinners. At this time, Bernadette remained an object of ridicule, persecutions, and abuse. The local authorities got involved with the commissioner picking her up from her house to examine her, threatening to take her to jail if she continued going to the grotto. Keep in mind, she was basically a child. She was examined by a notable local doctor. His examination concluded that Bernadette had no indication of hallucination, hysteria, or delusions. He said, here is an extraordinary event totally unknown to science and medicine. Nevertheless, the persecutions did not cease and the police continued treating her unjustly. The parish priest remained her steadfast offender. The 22nd of February. The Blessed Mother did not appear. Bernadette became the object of ridicule of the people. The 23rd of February. The crowds have become staggering in size. For the first time, the Blessed Virgin Mary makes a request. Before that, she gives Bernadette a secret that she was instructed to not repeat, including a prayer. She has not repeated either of those throughout the rest of her life. Then she made a request saying, Now, my daughter, go and tell the priest to erect in this place a sanctuary. People should come here in procession. Bernadette went immediately to the church to give the message to the pastor. The priest asked her the name of the lady, and Bernadette responded that she did not know it. It had not occurred to her, or she did not know at this time that she was talking to the mother of God. After listening to her, the pastor said, Can you understand that your testimony alone is not enough for me? Tell the lady to let herself be known. If it is the virgin, may she manifest it through a great miracle. Did you not tell me that she appears on a wild rose bush? Well then, tell the lady for me that if she wants a sanctuary, may the rose bush blossom. February 24th. Bernadette, as usual, arrived at the grotto, ignoring the crowds. The virgin appeared. Bernadette told Mary that what the priest requested. The apparition smiled without saying a word. She then asked her to pray for sinners and exclaimed three times, Penance! 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 She asked Bernadette to repeat these words, and she did so. She kneeled towards the back of the grotto. Mary revealed a personal secret there and then disappeared. That personal secret has never been revealed to my knowledge. Bernadette did not relate all the details, but witnesses recount that they also saw her kiss the ground at different times. The Blessed Mother had said to her, Pray for sinners. You will kiss the ground for the conversion of sinners. As the vision moved back, Bernadette would follow it, kneeling and kissing the ground. Bernadette turned to the people and said with signs, You also should kiss the ground. Bernadette received his personal mission to pray and do penance for sinners. This included a personal request to crawl the grounds of the grotto, kissing the soil in penance. February the 25th. Mary said, My daughter, I want to entrust the last secret only to you, just as the last two. Do not reveal them to any person in this world. After a moment of silence, the virgin said, And now go and drink and wash your feet at the fountain and eat the grass there. Bernadette looked around her and saw no fountain. She, saw, she thought the virgin was sending her to the stream nearby. 
The Blessed Mother stopped her and said, Don't go there, go to the fountain that is here. She pointed to the grotto. Bernadette went up and down and stopped near the rock. She looked for the fountain with no success, and so, as trying to obey, she looked at Mary. Having been given a new sign, Bernadette inclined down and started digging into the soil with her hands, successfully digging a small hole. Without warning, water started to appear and rapidly filled the hole with as much water as if it were to fill a glass. It was mixed with swampy dirt. Uh, Bernadette put it to her lips three times with no intention of drinking it. However, she overcame her disgust at the concept of drinking uh, water mixed with dirt, and she drank it. The crowd laughed at her. Unknown to them, she had opened a site of unparalleled miracles that persists to this day. The miraculous water of Lourdes has been examined by prominent scientists. It is virgin water, very pure, natural water. Strangely, it is free of bacteria and pollutant, pollutants, unless you count the local soil, a condition some have said points to the Immaculate Conception. February 26th, the miraculous waters produced the first miracle. The good pastor of Lourdes had asked for a small sign, but the Blessed Virgin gave everyone a large, undeniable sign. This was the first healing miracle. It involved a stone cutter named Borette, who had a, multi who had a mutilated eye from a mining explosion 20 years earlier. He was a faithful Catholic. He and his daughter went to the grotto fountain to pray. Despite the water being mixed with the soil, he rubbed it in his eye. He began screaming with joy as the darkness that had been his constant companion from that eye disappeared. His eyesight returned, baffling the doctors. Most astonishingly, despite his, eye having, his vision having been returned, the lesions and scars remained, but his eye functioned perfectly. March 2nd. Bernadette goes again to see the pastor of Lourdes, reminding him of Mary's request to build a sanctuary on the site of the apparitions. The pastor said it was, a, it was the work for the bishop, who was already aware of the petition and the one responsible to fulfill the re request of heaven, as he was the local ordinary. March 4th. On the final day, as was her usual habit, Bernadette went to Mass before going to the grotto. As it was the last of the fifteen days, she was filled with sadness, asking if she'll see the Virgin again. The day ended with the most incredible of the miracles. The second miracle involved a child named Justino, who was in agony. Since birth, he had had a, f a persistent high fever that, little by little, was destroying his life. On the day of the miracle, his parents thought that he was dead. The mother, in desperation, took the child and ran to the fountain. Justino showed no vital signs. The mother immersed the child in the cold water for 15 minutes. After she returned to the house, she noticed the child was breathing normally. The following day, Justino woke up with a healthy complexion, his eyes full of life. He asked for food, and his legs were strengthened. This news of the event rapidly spread across Europe. Three highly esteemed doctors confirmed the unbelievable nature of the event. After this, the regional gover governor attempted to block all visitors from visiting Lourdes, which failed spectacularly. Bernadette continued visiting the grotto with pilgrims, despite the Virgin not appearing again, at least in the immediate time. The 25th of March, the Feast of the Annunciation. Bernadette felt called to the grotto. An astonishing crowd was visiting the grotto. Many pilgrims arrived hoping that the Feast of the Annunciation would draw a visit from the Virgin. She did appear. Upon her appearance, Bernadette asked Our Lady again, in your kindness, can you please tell me who you are and what is your name? At first, she only smiled. Bernadette persisted. Can you please tell me who you are? I beg you, my lady. Then the lady's gaze left Bernadette. She separated her hands and slipped in her arm the rosary she held on her fingers, raising at the same time her hands and her radiant head. Her, her hands united again in front of her chest and directed her gaze to heaven as she said, I am the Immaculate Conception. With that, she disappeared. Bernadette heard those words for the first time. While she headed to the rectory to tell the pastor, he had ordered her to ask the name of the vision, she repeated along the way, Immaculate Conception. Remember that Bernadette was illiterate and could not understand their meaning. The priest heard the news and was astonished. How can a country girl without any religious instruction know about a dogma only proclaimed by the church four years earlier? In 1854, Pope Pius IX had defined the dogma of the Immaculate Conception. In those days, the lady didn't typically read papal encyclicals and the like as many of us do today in the internet age. The priest took this as confirmation that the apparition was in fact from heaven and authentic.
The Last Apparition, July 16th, the Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Bernadette again felt urged to visit the, the grotto, which was fenced and blockaded by the secular Masonic authorities. She was accompanied by her aunt and some neighbors and crossed through the grassland adjacent to the grotto. They knelt as close as possible to the grotto without actually arriving there. Bernadette received the last visit from the Blessed Mother and said she never appeared so glorious. So here is a brief summary of the messages of the Virgin Mary of Lourdes. One, it is a confirmation from heaven of the dogmatic definition of the Immaculate Conception, again defined by Pope Pius IX infallibly in 1854. Our Lady presents herself as, a, as mother and a model of purity for the world in need of this virtue. It is an exaltation to the virtues of poverty and humility. In, in so doing, by choosing Bernadette to be the recipient of the, mess, of the messages, as is consistent with previous and later Marian apparitions, including our, the message of Our Lady of Fatima. The Blessed Mother repeats the most important thing is to be happy in the other life, even though it is necessary to accept the cross to achieve happiness, which is not of this world. And finally, the emphasis is on the importance of prayer, the rosary, doing acts of penance, and humility. This is a message of infinite mercy for sinners and for care of the sick, reflected in the ongoing miracles that happen today. If you like videos like this, like and share this video and subscribe and click the notification bell below. If you're interested in supporting my work, there are various options in the description below, including links to my Patreon and Subscribestar, along with my social media, the Sources blog, and the Return to Tradition Facebook page. Thanks for listening. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.